After yesterday, you probably thought things could not get spicier with Disney, Star Wars, Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy, and more. You probably thought that Elon Musk funding Gina Carano's lawsuit, and maybe the lawsuit of more, that that was as big as it could get. But what if we told you that just after that, news broke? Well, The Mandalorian was rushed into production. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel, the place where we keep you ahead of the culture curve. We're happy to do so. We're happy to explain entertainment. And folks, it's time to get into doing just that yet again, despite how the mainstream can't stand the acumen in which we display. Star Wars The Mandalorian and Grogu Movie gets filming start date. This is by Cameron Bonamolo, and it's out of comicbook.com. And folks, I want you to take a look at the release date for the article. This is not necessarily the first place that this story hit. But this gives you an idea of when this was hitting. This hit February 6th, yesterday, at 5.05 p.m. Eastern Time. In other words, this news was breaking in the afternoon, the late afternoon, Eastern Time, and this news was breaking subsequent to the Gina Carano story. Interesting, isn't it? This is the way the Mandalorian movie has a filming start date. <laughs> that same Mandalorian movie that uh, Gina Carano is apparently suing over. Elon Musk funding it. Will there be more? Following Disney and Lucasfilm's official announcement that the Mandalorian and Grogu feature directed by series creator John Favreau would begin production this year, a new listing on the Film and Television Industry Alliance's production tracking service reveals that the Mando movie, the first Star Wars, mo uh, Star Wars movie since 2019's The Rise of Skywalker, will start shooting June 17th in Los Angeles. The first three seasons of the hit Disney Plus series all filmed primarily in the L.A. area, including on sound stages at Manhattan Beach Studios with ILM's Stagecraft Technology and the Volume. Now, why does this matter, folks? Well, it matters because the Ray movie, well, there's a lot of reasons, but the Ray movie was uh, originally intended to go into production in the U.K. this fall at the Pinewood Studios. And what happened was, is that because the Ray movie was not ready to go, they had to vacate that. And our understanding has been that in order to get out of Pinewood, but not, not take a penalty or a fee, that they were going to move the Mandalorian over to Pinewood and wait and film this in the fall. Now, uh, our sources, and this is what's so funny about this is, as we said on the live show yesterday, before we knew all the details here, this was the topic for this morning was going to be telling everybody, hey, the Mandalorian's being rushed into production. They're going to move it to L.A., at least for the first uh, part of this, maybe for the TV show part of it. And I think that is what's happening here is that the TV show portion is going to be shot in L.A., which that presents its own problems. Uh, it's going to if if they're shot in different locations for the TV show versus the, the movie, they're going to look different. It's going to have a different look. Pros and cons to that as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it, it's amazing that this is happening because. It suggests a few things. First of all, by rushing this into production in Los Angeles and going ahead with this uh, in just a few months, it would indicate that Dave Filoni, who we pretty much at this point know, it, it is rumor and speculation territory technically, but we pretty much believe this, that uh, Dave Filoni was brought in to plus, quote unquote, plus up the script. So if Dave Filoni is doing that, this is this is really fast because you got to get into pre-production after the scripts are done. And if he's coming to, to plus up this thing, uh, this is moving extremely quickly. Now, that all matters, of course, because as they're moving extremely quickly, they're also facing the Gina Carano issue, and it's going to have an impact on the film. There's no doubt about it. Uh, real quick, though, folks, let me share with you that we were not the only ones reporting on this Pinewood situation. Uh, if you go back... Uh, and, and as well as the schedule changes, if you go back to Bespin Bulletin on December 13th, Star Wars The Mandalorian Season 4 to begin filming in February 2024. I think this was act uh, actually accurate. I think this is how quickly Lucasfilm and Disney have been scrambling because I think that they had planned to make just a normal season. The Ray movie wasn't ready. They figured it out sometime after Thanksgiving. They rushed to get a fix in. Um, then they realized, oh, crap, we, 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 we got to get this thing going faster than that to get this movie done in time. We're going to have to... We're going to have to do the uh, Los Angeles side of this thing on the TV show and the movie. It's it's chaos. It's utter chaos. 
But let's talk about the Gina Carano side of this on the movie because this is going to impact it. And it's it's very interesting to me that on the exact same day that the lawsuit gets announced and perhaps hours after that happens, we get knowledge that they're rushing this into production. And, and folks, if you think that they're not rushing this into production, consider this for a moment. By all accounts, the Ray movie was where they were going. And then sometime after Thanksgiving, probably close to the uh, new year, that's when the change happened. We know that that change had to have happened around that time because it was New Year's Eve when Charmino Bechinoy, the director for the Ray movie, came out and made her declaration that in 2024, it was time for a woman to shape Star Wars. And that means she hadn't been told yet. Everybody hanging with me there? Everybody, I think everybody can agree on that. As of New Year's Eve, not even Charmino Bechinoy knew that was had been taken from her. So that's how quickly they had to move to get something out for Star Wars. So that 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 portends chaos. And it's amazing to me that just after Gina Carano's lawsuit is announced, that's when we get the announcement that, well, this is going to be shot at least partially in Los Angeles. And to explain why that's such a big deal, it has to do with tax credits, number one. I mean, we, we, there's going to be a whole video on this coming up soon, but it has to do with the, the tax credits and how that's going to work. I'm betting they couldn't use the tax credits for the, the Disney Plus show side of this. That's what I bet. And then also, you have the issue of uh, shooting in the volume, which is how they shoot The Mandalorian. If they shoot the first, you know, six episodes in the volume, and then they do the movie at Pinewood, then it's going to be distinctly different looking. All of that said, how is the Mandalorian movie going to be affected by the Gina Carano lawsuit? Well, there's, there's a number of ways that it's going to be affected. Before we get into the ways that it's going to be affected, let's read an article right now out of Forbes by Paul Tassie. Paul Tassie is someone that I used to read and and enjoy, and things have gone off the rails. Uh, since over the last years, I would say. And so let's read what Paul Tassi has to say and use this as sort of a barometer of how the mainstream corporate media is going to react. Although I think the mainstream corporate media is so diminished at this point that I, I don't think people, I don't think people take them seriously anymore. I think there's been a sea change in the last 12 months where the mainstream media, they don't have any power, but let's read and see what their game plan is. Gina Carano is suing to be forcibly recast in The Mandalorian while funded by Elon Musk. The Free Speech Avengers are attempting to assemble for one of the higher profile cases in recent Hollywood history. Actress and former MMA fighter Gina Carano has taken up Elon Musk on his recent offer for him to foot the bill for anyone fired because of political tweets on Twitter, as per what he believes is a free speech crusade. And I would say that right off the bat, either this is uh, lacking knowledge or it's misleading, one or the other, maybe both. Gina Carano apparently was selected by a legal team as the lead case in this, and so that, that was offered to her, and she accepted. Um, it's not just that she has taken up this call amongst a, a large number of people. It's that the legal team that Elon Musk assembled to handle this has publicly chosen her first and foremost. Gina Carano is suing Disney after she was fired from her role as Cara Dune in The Mandalorian in 2021. One of the cited posts in question said the following, Most people today don't realize that to get to the point where bad people, soldiers, could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views? And well, it's, it's, it's so being Jewish is immutable. Political views, though, may be extremely uh, closely held. So I would say that there's not a tremendous difference. There's a categorical difference, but it's not lost upon me what Gina Carano is trying to say here. And you have to be, well, you, you, you'd have to be rather poor in your intellect to not see the comparison. Past that, Carano shared anti-mass sentiments during the COVID pandemic. By the way, uh, science shows us that those did absolutely nothing. Uh, that's a sad thing, but it's true. Uh, they did nothing. And was a supporter of the idea that there was anti-Trump fraud in the 2020 election. There was probably also anti-Biden fraud in the 2020 election. There's always fraud in elections. It's part of elections is that there's some degree of corruption in almost any system out there, right? You can go to, uh, you can go to a restaurant. There's going to be some degree of fraud in the restaurant. Any, any human endeavor is going to have some degree of fraud, so no issue there either. She's also been accused of uh, 
uh, phobic comments in the past, mocking gender pronouns. You'll notice that Paul Tassie doesn't put evidence of this in uh, in the uh, article, and you'll also no notice what Paul Tassie does. Let me let me demonstrate the. We just talked about fraud, right? We talked about corruption. Let me show you the twist that happens here. I want to show everybody how this game is played. So let's review again. Hirano shared anti-mask sentiments, okay? And we know that masks did nothing. We, uh, she, it talks about fraud, and different people have different beliefs about how much fraud occurred. That's not for this uh, channel to discuss, but fraud occurs in any almost human interaction you can imagine. But then, what Tassie does is he switches. Notice the notice we're in direct statements of fact in the first sentence. Okay, the second sentence in the paragraph switches, and it switches to being a passive voice. She has also been accused of. Notice that that's not to say that she did these things, and there is no evidence presented of these things, but it is a switch in the voice of the paragraph, and my my ponderance on this is that it is done to protect against legal action because it's probably very strongly a false statement. The first two are true statements. The third in that second sentence is probably a very false statement and thus the switch in the voice. And the switch in the voice is what I find to be less than could be out of an author. It's that switch. It's that switch that gives me the thought that this was known. We'll continue on. The suit is something. Carano is suing not just for damages, $75,000, but is actually seeking a court order that would force Disney to recast her in the show. In, the, in other words, she would be reinstated to her prior position. Now, I personally don't think that that's going to happen. And frankly, I don't think that that's really what's wanted but I think that's the claim that's being made for strategic reasons. That's my own speculation. This has led many fans to wonder how, if forced to do just that, somehow Disney would concoct any number of creative ways that Cara Dune could reappear and then be killed off in the Mandalorian universe, rather than just being written out the way she's been now. Um, and by the way, Disney, in their tweet, or not their tweet, but in their Gizmodo, I think. I think it's Gizmodo. Whichever article it was that they Lucasfilm decided to promulgate their view of, of uh, Gina Carano, they essentially made it known and through statement by Bob Chapik, apparently as alleged in the lawsuit, that Gina Carano was not let go for performance reasons or for audience reasons, but for morality or virtue reasons, for political opinion reasons. And that's where they got in trouble. And that's where, uh, that's where Paul Tassi, I think, needs to take some notice. Carano's name has come up more often lately in the wake of the allegations against and now conviction of Jonathan Majors on assault charges. I have no idea what he's talking about. I have I have no idea why that would happen. The idea was that Disney fired Corrado over mere comments, but they waited until Majors was conv convinced of convicted Paul convicted of literal assault before firing him from playing Kang in the Marvel Universe. Okay, there's that's a decent connection. Corrado also claims that the opposite side of the coin wasn't met with the same response, like Mandalorian star Pedro Pascal comparing uh, Trump to a very bad man in 2017. And there's far more documentation than just that. There's a vast amount of, of documentation, including Mark Hamill, who is in real life an insane nut job who needs to go take care of his grandchild. But uh, there's also documentation in the lawsuit of other men espousing extremely similar beliefs to Gina Carano, who worked on this uh, project on The Mandalorian, and they didn't suffer any consequence when they had the same or similar values and opinions as she. The counter argument, of course, is that Disney as a private company is that Disney is a private company and they are allowed to do exactly what they did. And Carano's issues are a conflagration of things. Now, here's where Paul inserts his own opinion about Carano. Separate from the uh, Jewish comparison, it was her apparent. And here's, here's the switch again, folks. This is Paul switching into passive voice again. Goes from making declarations of statement to it was her, insert the get me out of uh, a legal trouble card here, her apparent anti-positions that caused Disney to ask her for a statement. Anti. She refused, but was then asked to meet with 45 employees of that persuasion plus Kathleen Kennedy. She didn't do that either. And then, and was then fired. Now, Paul, Disney doesn't want you to think she was fired. So you're screwing up there. You need to get, you need to get with your handlers and figure that out. 
Carano is suing for wrongful discharge and also discrimination. The general sense is that this will end up being a case that may not go very far. Well, Paul, that's because you don't understand entertainment. You don't understand the law. And so you write for Forbes, the former home of Scott Mendelson. And the idea that she's seeking a court order to actually be recast in the Mandalorian scenes on its face absurd. Well, that's because you don't understand the strategy that's being played here because you're playing checkers and they're playing 40 chess. It is certainly true that Carano's career has tanked in the wake of Iger, of her Mandalorian firing. It's also true that Star Wars has tanked in the wake of her firing. Now making movies with conservative website, The Daily Wire, as opposed to Hollywood features or series. That's also an evaluation that uh, that is a negative. So Paul seems to uh, not like conservative fare, but a uh, big fan of the liberal fare. As for the Elon of it all, he's promised infinite money for cases like this. Though originally this was thought to be for more average users fired for inflammatory tweets to potentially take action against employers. Don't you wish it was, Paul? Carano's situation is about as high profile as we've seen in recent years in the fired for tweets category. We'll see what happens, but I would not expect to see Cara, Dune, Cara Dune mandatorily jammed back into the Mandalorian anytime soon. But Paul, you have once again managed to miss the mark. And here's why, folks. Let's go back to the Mandalorian movie. What Jen Carano is alleging in the lawsuit is that she was promised by John Favreau, and we'll see if she has documentation of this, that she was uh, being cast in the Rangers of the High Republic, and that there was an amount of money attached to that, and that that was going to lead into these movies. With the Mandalorian movie being rushed into production now, it would seem that all uh, it's going forward, it's going ahead. And so the question becomes, as a part of the lawsuit, is Gina Carano entitled to some percentage of the success of the movie? Well, isn't that interesting? Also, with the Mandalorian movie going forward, the question becomes, how much is the Gina, uh, Gina Carano lawsuit going to damage the Mandalorian movie and its box office potential? That's an interesting question. Also, going forward, how much is this going to damage the co-stars who posted these wackadoodle nut job posts on Twitter that are just orders of magnitude of insanity greater than anything that Gina Carano could ever dream of posting. That's interesting. And then you've also got to wonder too, what does it mean if people like John Favreau, Kathleen Kennedy, and more are pulled into a deposition for this? What does that mean if as part of their uh, work on this movie, that they're also having to explain what was promised to Gina Carano, what was said to her, what are these tweets that, or what are these emails that you accidentally sent her way that tried to connect her with an with a day on the Capitol uh, when she had absolutely no connection? What is this about her being attached to the uh, or, or being asked to fund an effort to attack her, literally being required to go fund uh, efforts to attack her, in which Leslie Headland who is the, the, the showrunner for The Acolyte, was apparently financially involved. All of this is insanity. All of this should be in Paul Tassie's article, but it's not. That's why the mainstream has lost power, because they won't tell you these things, and we will, and because you want the truth. And that's where all of this gets very spicy. Do I expect to see Cara Dune back into Star Wars? No. Do I expect that to be a major sticking point, though, and how much money they owe her? You bet, you bet, you bet. Folks, we explain entertainment. We do our very best to keep you ahead of the culture curve and help you see the chess that's being played while the mainstream media stacks the board with checkers. All right. Folks, that's the video for today, but my gosh, do we have content on the way. The Pro Show, special edition, coming up this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be doing the pre-show for the earnings call. We expect news to be breaking about that earnings call, so you'll want to be there. Then we'll take the earnings call for Disney live on the Valiant Renegade channel. Don't miss that. That'll be at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And folks, please like, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. As we always say, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. And go get them, Gina. Today, February 7th, coverage of the Disney earnings call begins at noon Eastern with Midnight's Edge, followed by a special edition of the Pro Show, a pre-show of what we can expect to see, as well as coverage from Valiant Renegade beginning at 4 p.m., where the earnings report will happen live during the show with post-show analysis. Don't miss a moment.